John is right here and he's making this fantastic Aussie Crunch. Aussie Crunch. Now, I've actually never made this before in my life. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a confession. This is my best friend Alex's recipe, and she's not even from Australia. She's from the deep, dark depths of Bolton. Fine. So, you know, should glamorous? We call it Very glamorous. Well, maybe we should call it Bolton Crunch. Bolton Crunch. crunch. But while it, why it's called Aussie Crunch is beyond me. It's Perhaps because it's a bit exotic and there's coconut and... You know. Exactly. So I've got it here in this pan, some butter. It's really easy to make though. She makes it and it's gorgeous, it really is. So I'm gonna put some butter into that pan. That's a lot of butter. Over a low heat. Well, That's do you know what right it though. is? But you only have a little crunch, a little piece of it. Well, if, if you're that way inclined, I have a full tray sometimes. Well, exactly. But, you know, I'm a big burly bloke, apparently. <laughs> um, so you put in the sugar and the butter. Okay. And you melt that together slowly. So good, good start with uh, butter and sugar. But the good thing about this is it's a really nice thing just to have in a biscuit tin. And it keeps for weeks, you know. Oh, so you don't need to eat it all in one. I'm just kidding about that. I know, but it is difficult, though. It's tempting, but yeah. it's, get, it's getting <laughs> towards winter, isn't it? So we need that layer of warmth. We do. <laughs> so in with some serendipity cereal, which is just cornflakes. Right. A nice happy accident. Uh, <laughs> they were made by accident cornflakes. That's why I call it serendipity cereal, because it was just a leftover piece of wheat that went dry, and then they milled it in, in America, and it turned into cereal. So they really? started doing that with corn. Yeah, oh, isn't that great? I didn't know that. See the yeah. things you learn. It was an accident. So serendipity cereal. Cornflakes were an accident. In with some, um, a bit like me, I was an accident <laughs> apparently. In with some co uh, coconut, grated, <laughs> grated, desiccated coconut. And then I'm going to sieve into that some flour, self-raising flour, which is quite strange because you think Ooh. you only use self-raising flour in a cake. Yes. But I think what it does is it just pops a little bit of air into oh, the mixture okay. and makes it really even more crumbly because this is quite a crumbly thing. Right. It's, it's tender and toothsome and chewy because of all the sugar. Toothsome is a great word. It's isn't it? Word, I love that some. word. <laughs> but it's, it's really lovely. And I know because you like your, um, your chocolate covered coconut bars. Yes, oh, well so, done for not seeing what they are. I know, well, I've got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, there are a few different brands out there. So, yeah, you love those. So I do. I'm going to be um, making this in, in honour of you for Thank that. You. But no, it's really good. And Alex, my friend, she makes it all the time for dinner parties mm. and, and it's great. It's really lovely. And if you're watching The X Factor, especially, you, you know, could sit and have that. Sit. And when you're watching that raunchy Sunday night program, the new Paul Dark program yes. that Dan was on about, if you're yes. getting a bit blushed at Lady the. Lady Chatterley's lovely. Yeah, if you're watching that and you're getting a bit sort of, ooh, taken aback, have a nibble and <laughs> it'll bring you right back down to earth, apparently. So you mix this all together, <laughs> mix okay. it all together, just toss it together. And then all you need to do is pour that butter sugar mixture over the top. Right, see, I so, could do that. Oh, anyone could yeah. do it. Anyone could do of it. Of course. Anyone could. Over the top. You might want to let this cool down a little bit first because it is bubbling. Right. But it'll be fine because it's going to go in the oven as well. Sure. So it's not like a refrigerator cake where you mi melt it together and shove it in the fridge. Right. It still needs to go into the into, oh, into okay. the oven. So you mix that sugary, buttery mixture through. Yeah. And I've got a little bit of cocoa powder in there as well, mm. just for a bit more chocolatey flavour because you can't beat chocolate and coconut. Gorgeous. So mix that together until you've pretty much coated everything and it's nice and well amalgamated and mixed. Sure. Because you don't want any lumps of flour because that, that'd just be a bit... bit do you know what, that'd be funny. a really good one to do with the kids. If, well, you know, if you've little ones, it'd be really good fun actually because they could do that. They could, oh, they could. And it's so easy, like I said, but also you can, as with all foods, I always say this, you can customise it. So if you wanted to put something sharp like sour cherries or cranberries Ooh, in there, that'd be good. you know, jazz it up mm. a little bit, a bit of white chocolate or something like that. Lovely. Endless possibilities are endless. Fantastic. So into a tin of some sort, now, you could do this in a round tin. That's a great thing about it. Just use whatever tin you've got yep, in. And matter. obviously, if it looks a bit thin in the tin, mm. then just reduce the cooking time just by about five, ten minutes. Oh, OK. So just use whatever you've got. Don't, yeah. don't go out and buy any specialist equipment, not for an Aussie crunch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's worth it, but there's no need, really. No. So that goes into an oven, about 180 fan, which is gas mark uh, six. Just, just 20 minutes. Right. Just till it all melts together and sets. Ooh. So into that. And then what I'm going to do to finish that off is as soon as it comes out of the oven and it's still hot, yeah. what you need to do is just get some milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate, whatever you want to use, and just break that up into squares. Oh, OK. And literally just shove it on top. Oh, see, so uh, you don't melt the chocolate yeah, or anything, it just goes on? You don't on. melt oh. it before. Because what it'll do is it'll melt really slowly then, so the chocolate won't burn. Because sometimes if you melt chocolate on the hob, it can seize and crack yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and that's not so good. Especially when, when the kids do it, they sort yeah. of get it wrong. So <laughs> if you just put it on top of the, uh, right. of the hot, freshly baked thing, it melts slowly Lovely. and then it'll set like a nice layer of chocolate on top. Beautiful. And then I'll finish Great. it off with some toasted coconut pieces, a bit of white chocolate, and then we can have a cup of tea and a slice of Aussie Can't wait, can't wait.